Your father works very hard for his money and you waste it all on records. Why don't you first uh, tell people how you we first met? So, uh, I was a uh, young college student and was very passionate about audio. And uh, I went through my audio journey uh, during the time I was like 15 to 18. I used to uh, save up all the money I had and I would buy um, you know, audio gear. And I, I slowly worked my way up, you know. And I think most people uh, watching this can relate to that. Yeah. All right. And so you, you had emailed me at some point. And I did. So, so I uh, worked my way up to this system, and then I, I basically I bought this VPI Scout, which I think had just come out at the time. Yeah. And uh, went through the, the whole vinyl thing, and I was just like, holy crap, like, vinyl is such a, an immersive experience. And it just took me in. And I just started, you know, buying records and just getting really into it. And uh, so I started, started following you. Yeah. And uh, from there, I, I decided to email you. And I was like, I have a Benz Scout or, or, or a VPI Scout with a Benz cartridge. And I got an audio research photo stage. And I have a Bel Canto DAC 3 and VCM or, or VSMs. And, um, and you were a young, young guy at that point, so that's, that's pretty sophisticated stuff for a young guy to have. Yeah, I, I mean, I started out a little bit slower. Yeah. You know, I started out with like Sony speakers and, and a, um, I think a Sony amplifier too. And uh, then just slowly grew and bought my first Totem speakers. I bought Totem Model 1s. And, uh, and then I had a Class A amplifier with that that I saved up for. And uh, so it just grew to having this setup that I got to in college, and it was just incredible. I'd invite people over, and people would just, they would just cry. They'd never heard anything like that, right? They yeah. were having MP3s on their phone or something. Right. Yeah. And then through Bobby um, uh, Pelkovic, right? Right, yeah. Uh, he, he really introduced me to just the community. And just, Are you, just were how, you from Rochester or something? Or where did he live? Upstate New York? Yeah, but I didn't live in New yeah. York. So how did you um, meet him? I didn't meet him. I was just, it was just through email. Oh, okay. Kind of like us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry, yeah. sorry to see that he passed away. But anyway, so so but you're here, so that's good. He 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 helped me get yeah. started on this yeah, stuff, yeah. and uh, he introduced me as so like just this uh, community and audio, and um, anyway, so I decided to contact you. Yeah. And I said, uh, I know you get, you get a lot of people contacting you. Yeah. It's famous. <laughs> um, and, and I said, you know, uh, I'm really into this stuff. And I have, this is the gear I have. And I love what you do. And you're an idol to me. Um, it's in color, I'm blushing. <laughs> And uh, I said, I really want to uh, like work in the audio industry. Where, like, how do I do this? Like, should I, should I go into engineering? Should I um, go into electrical engineering? Or should I just leave now? And like, should I just learn this stuff? And, uh, and maybe move to New York and I don't know, live this lifestyle where I'm just like making audio gear. And stuff. Right. And you tell me, well, most people, that I know in the audio industry have their EE, most design engineers. Yeah. Stay in school. They're real. Yeah, they're real. Stay in school. Yeah. Get through school. Develop your listening skills. And then apply that to what you do. And apply that passion to what you do. That was me. I gave you such good advice. Yeah. I'm that's sorry. what you said. <laughs> good. And then, and then you said, well, bye bye. I have to like leave for yeah, a train. That's me. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> but you said uh, that I made your day. Yeah. So that was cool. Yeah, because I love hearing from young people who want to, you know, follow this up and get into it. Yeah. Yeah, you did. You did make my day. <laughs> this is making another day, so it's even better. Okay, so, so, then, so then next step is you went, you went to... So I went to university, studied EE. I was uh, also studying um, audio amps on the side and continued to build my system. Yeah, so you had a practical um, knowledge, practical base based upon your experience as a hobbyist. Yeah. And then you got a, a real theoretical uh, base from, from an education. And where did you go to school? Uh, UNC Charlotte. 
in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. 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 Good high five stores there. You good? Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember, I think I met you in a Music Matters event. Yeah, it's audio, yeah. And audio advice. Audio, uh, audio advice. Audio advice, yeah. 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 And when I was there that night, I think you were there and you did this presentation where you had this rip of your uh, continuum turntable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, it was, it was an incredible presentation. I walked out of the room and there's Dave Naber from uh, Class A Audio. Yeah. And we start chatting. And uh, that led to a job. Yeah, because that's more important for you because you, you didn't want to be a journalist. You wanted to be in the, in the business itself. And, and, right. Yeah. So that. Yeah, was and there's some photo online actually of me in, uh, listening to your uh, oh, cool. presentation. And right when I walked out of this door, I would actually uh, talk to Dave, which got me a job at Class A Audio. And so I started working for Class A and B and W. Wow. Right out of school. So, you know, Dave, Dave was a huge uh, player in getting me into the industry yeah, as well. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I started working for them and I developed a few Class D amplifiers for them. And then I was put on a project to redesign the Nautilus crossover for b and oh, wow. And that was a, uh, it was an honor. Yeah, that's a complete, big thing. Complete yeah. honor to yeah. do that. And you know, it's an electronic crossover. Yeah. It's actually a four-way system, right. fully active. Right. And I, I designed all the, um, the analog circuitry um, in order to modernize the design. And so I did that, and then uh, decided to move to Colorado. I, uh, I quit my job and decided to, wow. decide, well, you know, let's I don't go know. experience <laughs> something. <laughs> what were you going to experience, mountain climbing? <laughs> Actually, my, my wife had gotten a job, and... Uh, that explains it, okay. <laughs> well, it is, and also, you know, I, I wanted to move back to the United States. Yeah. I want to experience new things in life. Right. And I wanted to just uh, see where it would take me. Yeah. And uh, I was sitting around, and I was like, you know, what am I going to do? I want to do audio. I still want to do audio. Yeah. So I walked into PS Audio, and I, I told Paul, Paul, I know who you are. I know who this company is. I want to, I want to work here. And he was like, "Well, yeah. Well, who are you? Like, you know, what have you done?" Yeah. And I'm like, "Well, I'm I'm from Bowers and Wilkins in Class A. Yeah. And I've done this and that. And, blah, blah. and we start, uh, we start talking. I don't know. I have this like impression that he, uh, he's not completely buying. It. He's not sold yet. Yeah." And we continue to talk, and we get on the topic of tubes, and we start arguing about, I don't know, some, some cathode voltage or something like that. And I just, I had, uh, there was this look in his face that said, uh, you know, uh, this guy, this guy's cool. He, he's no, like me. He yeah, just yeah. argues. He <laughs> argues. No matter what. <laughs> right. That's, and that's good. That, that's what a, so, a guy like that wants. He wants somebody who's going to push back against the boss. He doesn't want a pliable right. soul. Yeah, he was wrong. He was wrong in that case. <laughs> he's right in many cases, but wrong in that case. Uh, so, uh, so anyways, I, he hired me. Yeah. And, and uh, I started... I designed the S300 and the M700, which is the, uh, which are the amplifiers for our stellar range. Right. And we're still selling them today. And, uh, so and what then, year was this that you started working for PS Audio? Uh, this would have been 2016. Oh, so just I, a couple of years ago. Yeah, just a couple of years wow. ago. So I'm newer. And then from there, I did the Sprout 100. Designed the Sprout 100. Oh, and uh, I have one that's supposed to be. I have a. Isn't that what I have? It's, it's yeah, I think you, you know. have one of those. Yeah, I got yeah, a review. Yeah. I, it's part. The review is partly written. And it's not finished. It's really good. I'm driving very expensive speakers with it. It sounds good. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, it is good. So uh, one of my focuses. Had I have been... to finish that review because this for analog planet. It's not. It's not directly what I do, but it's good because I want people to know they can get this little thing that really can do a great job on a desktop. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I've got the headline written too. The headline is that this product does everything but take up a lot of space on your desk. Yeah, and it has a great phono stage. Yeah, yeah. It really does. It uses the 1642 op amp from Texas. Yeah. And then a hybrid RIA stage with a 1662 op amp, which is, these are nice op amps for that price range. Yeah. You know, a lot of people put like 5532 and stuff like this. Good, yeah. good. Most Not people don't, don't. Whatever. And I yeah. don't know. I, I don't think you're worried that those are better numbers than the other numbers. Yeah, and that's fine. Okay, so well, that's another topic. And but. so I, so I was uh, just 
Well, then you, you came and introduced yourself to me tonight and it reminded me of the story about the email, which is, which is great. I mean, I love hearing that. But then, you, you are now designing a phono preamp. Yes. A dedicated phono preamp. That's correct. For PS. Yes, so it's an all discrete uh, um, phono stage that uses a passive RIA. Um, it's going to come in roughly around $2,000. It's going to be in a stellar chassis, which is our slim kind of entry level right. line. And uh, it's going to have balanced output, um, a remote for your loading. So right. it has uh, 60, 100, uh, 200, and 47. Right. And then it has a custom setting for one ohm to one pick. Oh, so you can put your own? Yeah, on the, it's like a pod on the back oh. that you can control. Yeah. So, um, and then uh, moving magnet and, mo and moving coil. Right. But, yeah. So, uh, very low noise. Um, other specs, eh, based on listening. Yeah. And well, good, listening because, is the number one thing. Yeah, because, you know, if, if you measure vinyl, it doesn't measure as well as a CD. It does not. It sounds so much better. It's but a, it, 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 it depends on what you measure. Exactly. And, and the whole experience of, or the whole process of the recording process. Or, right. Yeah, that makes sense. And so, it's a combination of technology, tech measurements, and listening. And yes. what, so, when you listen, if you find something that is objectionable, what would you modify to change how it sounds? So, for, a, for this product, for instance, what I'm modifying is, the, uh, is actually the open loop signal path, okay? So with an integrated op amp, which is a little chip. Yes. It's a little chip that a company has made. The, you know, does, Texas Instruments, analog devices, they've made this design. And it does most, it's mostly in, in, in the little chip. And it, in the little not chip, you and can you do. can't control the, the open loop right. amplifier right. at all. You just control the, the actual uh, feedback. Right. So you put, you know, a couple resistors around it, maybe a capacitor for, right changing the, the, um, the response, but you can't change the gain, the open, what's called open loop gain of that. Right. So what you can do with discrete circuits is you can change all these characteristics about this open loop response and you can start getting it to behave in many different ways. Huh. Okay, downside, you can screw it up, big right. time. You yeah. can make it sound horrible. Right. Way worse than than a fifty cent chip. Right. But the upside is if you know what you're listening for, and you know some of the technical specifications of how these amplifiers respond, you can actually have a lot more dials to get oh, the music exactly the way you want it. And like, what records do you use as a as references? You have you have a series of records that you use. I do. I do. Um, so, actually, I had a, a very uh, close friend, uh, Jim Langley, actually gift me a, a Ortofon A90. That's a nice gift. I love that cartridge. That's Thank one, you, Jim. still one of my favorite parts. The A95 is even better, but the A90 is, is like a hot rod. It's so fast. It's so clean. Yeah. That was a revolutionary cartridge. That, I think that'll go down in history as one of the, one of the great cartridges ever. It's, it's fantastic. Fact, I have a lot of cartridges. I wore that one. I'm very rarely worn out of cartridges because I'm so busy reviewing and I have so many in my mm -hmm. box there. Um, that one, I actually wore the stylus down from too much use and had to get it wow. rebuilt. And they don't rebuild that was those. on your continuum? Yeah. Was it? Oh, wow. They don't rebuild those. They, wow. they just don't anymore. I don't think they rebuild them, but they did. They rebuilt it for me. And I still I love that cartridge. It's great. So that's so a, he gifted me this A90. Yeah. I have a, a VPI TNT Mark V. Oh, that's cool. That I that I use. Yeah. I bought that um, a few years ago. And what arm yeah. is on there? It's the regular. That is the uh, VPI, um, the the 10.5i. Yeah, not a that's 3D. Not a 3D. It's not a 3D. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I want. It's okay. I want to upgrade that. That's okay. It's but um, so. So yeah, I have that set up and uh, uh, Harvest speakers at home uh, and also uh, my own designs. Speakers? Wow. Yes. You're a very busy man. Yes. Speakers. Yes. Well, but these speakers, I designed the crossover to this. Oh. Yeah, so but this is... This is, an so is it active? Or? It's, it's, actually, uh, it's actually hybrid in the sense that it, the bottom end, the mid-bass coupler, which is this 8, 
um, and the side firing 12 inch woofer, right. which is all powered by a 1400 watt internal class D oh, amplifier. Wow. This is, that's all active, and then this is passive here. Right. So we have a crossover on the bottom end, which is an active crossover, and we have a passive crossover on the top. Well, so so, you, so you I, designed, I designed that. Wow, yeah. so you're quite hot stuff at this company now. Uh, I'm working my I way guess. out. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. <laughs> that's great. It's been that's, a pleasure. Yeah, and so what, but what drives me is the music. Yes, of course. It, it really to. is. That's what and this industry is about as opposed yeah. to the techno dweebs who just measure and, and yeah. don't even care what it's applied to. Just Oh yeah, well we have this whole thing today in audio. It's like these form guys, you know, all these forms. I stay, and they, I stay and away. They get, on, they get on the form and they say, well this DAC has 0.005%. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. And then, and then, oh well, no, this $150 DAC, it has point. Zero 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 one five percent, and therefore you you are you are completely stupid. Right, and then so for doing well, what, this. Is it, what does it sound like? It's well, like well, well <laughs> you know, well it's it's supposed to sound the way it, it comes in. Exactly. It's like okay, okay, sure. Like how do you like how do you even freaking know that? Otherwise, it's confirmational you know? bias. You can't judge. You can't you can't yeah. trust your ears because it's confirmational bias unless you do a so, double blind test of everything. <laughs> yeah, it's it's for me. I, I read this stuff, and you know, I know there there are a lot of viewers probably thinking, well, like I understand that that side of stuff. I I seriously don't. As 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 a designer, I design audio equipment. Right. I designed the the, uh, uh, the and, P3 and you, regenerator. You do it because you understand. The, it. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, it's been it's been a huge uh, just motivator with me. Now you. Uh, Bill Levin said you had a, oh there he is, said you had a, uh, a circuit board you were going to show me. Do you have that? I do. Are you going to show it to me? Yes. Are you waiting to the very end? We're getting close to the very end. Alright. <laughs> because go magically, go. a part has, oh, three. Okay. Yeah. Alright. And a $2,000 price point. All discreet. Yeah. Okay. All the, the open loop characteristics have been, uh, Analyzed greatly by ear and equipment. Okay, I make sure things aren't too messed up. But and so where are the op amps <laughs> that we're talking about? Um, so this would actually be one half of this is a full op amp that would be like the size of of a chip like this. Okay. This chip is only for the DC performance of the amplifier. So there, but there is an op amp in here. Is what you're saying? Well, the, these are op amps. So this is an op amp. Oh, I see. This is an op amp. Oh, you know, I thought. And this is an op. It's an operational amplifier. I so thought it was going to be like all one, like a chip. It's not no, no, chip. it's all discrete. So I use individual transistors. Oh. See, an individual when you say that, oh. when I think most people, when they say here that you're using an op amp, they think it's like all on one chip. But it's not all on one chip. Not necessarily. But it can be. But it's but not. But you can also build an operational amplifier using and that's what you transistors. Did. Yes. You built one. Built one from it's like using the raw ingredients. Right. Oh, okay. So you see that now it, this has completely changed your opinion of this because you were thinking he just took a couple of chips and got some dip and and guacamole and made an amplifier. But you didn't do that. You actually discreetly did it. That's right. And this is uh, lots of bias on these these big uh, MOSFETs here that make sure that I don't have a lot of output uh, stage distortion and that it stays very linear and I, I, I make uh, certain stages in a certain way that produce um, distortion in a, in a very specific way to make it less audible actually. Okay, and what, what, is, what, goes, what is that? This is actually a microcontroller. Oh. It's to control that loading and the you know muting and the power all supply section kind of is over here. Uh, power supply is right here. So a lot of this, actually, most of the components that you see um, is actually power supply. Are they seeing it over there? Yeah. Make sure. Okay, let's hold it like that. Yeah. Okay. So, so most of so most of everything on this board is actually power supply. The signal path it's is actually rarely short. So it's, it's, it's actually fairly short. Oh, okay. So it's regulators yeah. and. and Regulators, and then I do uh, active filtering to make sure that there's very low noise on the on the voltage rail. 
And what's the, um, what's the bandwidth of this? Is it like 20 to 20K or do you go wider? Oh, I go, I go much wider than that. So uh, right now I'm at over uh, 200K. Wow. But uh, I but I use I yeah. use very limited amounts of feedback to yeah. get there. So feedback, if you increase feedback, you increase the bandwidth. Uh, so if you ver if you don't use a whole lot of feedback or global feedback, um, getting higher bandwidth is going to be harder. Yeah. So uh, so I don't use a whole lot of feedback, and I still have decent amounts of uh, uh, bandwidth. Right. So. And what are these pods here for? Uh, this is for con uh, controlling your uh, custom loading. So oh. on the back, you this is going to control anywhere from one ohm to one k. Oh. And this is this is the moving coil, moving magnet, and then this is your output. So there's not going to be a fixed. There's not a fixed. Um, there are loading. fixed. So you can also choose 60 ohms, 100, 200. 47, and you also have your custom section. I see, and the custom yeah. section you do it by ear, you do some. And... Uh, so we actually have like a, a marker on oh. the back that will say, okay, from one ohm to one K, set it. Oh, cool. And then that's your custom. So you can put this to 470, right? And then go between 100, 200, and 470, for instance, on the remote right. from your listening chair. Oh, that's great. So that's remote yeah. control. Yeah, two, two, you know, two grand. Yeah, that's fantastic. You know? And it's made right here in America. That's right. Uh, when do you? When is this going to be available? Uh, summer 2019. Great. It'll be, a, it'll be a good summer. It will. Be. Okay. Well, this is very exciting, and uh, I'm especially, I especially like the fact that uh, that you went to school and did this, and uh, that I have some small part of it. So it's great. Well, congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.